So diabetes has a lot of changes that um, occurs, uh, that occur with um, the GI tract, and it changes um, by inducing inflammation, causing apoptosis, causing major changes along the tract, not just in the stomach, where a lot of people think the major problems occur, but along the entire length of the GI tract, down into the colon. And, um, and it, it's what we think is uh, predominant um, in the form of uh, diabetic gastroparesis as the real culprit to the problem that we're facing uh, with GI pain in these patients. And so our goal is to try to help uh, that symptom by uh, controlling diabetic gastroparesis by a variety of methods. Well, the enteric nervous system um, is uh, important in regulating the function uh, along the length of the stomach uh, down into the GI tract. And, um, and so uh, a variety of cells, including uh, neurons, smooth muscle cells, the interstitial cells of Cajal, all these different uh, cells work together to, um, to make up the elaborate uh, network. And so diabetes affects not just one, but uh, it alters all of these cells, and all of these cells playing an integral role together ends up causing a, a big uh, feedback loop, a positive feedback loop that basically uh, snowballs the effect of uh, diabetes and, and um, gastroenteral uh, problems. Therapies um, that GI uh, patients um, should be uh, facing or seeing are, include lifestyle modifications, uh, things like um, uh, chewing um, their food well and um, using uh, smaller portions. Well, we tend to um, uh, suggest uh, lower fat content meals because uh, fat can delay gastric emptying and that's already a problem in and of itself for the, these patients. Um, on top of that, we um, also promote some more liquid meals, sort of like soups and stews, because it's actually an interesting phenomenon. These patients have um, a protective effect in that their liquid um, passing rate is preserved in these patients. Um, outside of these lifestyle modification changes, uh, we start to um, uh, go down the route of um, psychological uh, benefit, so uh, biofeedback and um, cognitive behavioral therapy and um, imagery techniques to help uh, uh, control their pain and their stress, which we know can um, uh, further exacerbate uh, their abdominal pain. On top of that, then uh, we progress along further to um, pharmacological agents. We um, use primarily prokinetic agents, uh, anti-emetic agents. We try to use things like uh, tricyclic antidepressants or anticonvulsants to try to spare some of that opioid effect um, which we see as um, a possible uh, propagating effect uh, with opioids and the, and the problems that these patients have. Um, further along, along refractory cases, we tend to think about uh, patients who might be a good candidate for uh, gastric uh, uh, stimulation.